It's time for Family Fun! Did God make a mistake? By putting Adam and Eve in the garden, and they wound up making their own choice. The wrong one. Eve, Eve, what have you done? The, uh, the, the serpent just told me to take one bite. But, but God told us not to, Eve. It's not that bad try. This is hard work. How are you doing, Adam? Oh, fine. I'm just going to start planting those pumpkin seeds. Oh. You know, Adam, ever since we left the garden, I feel like I'm learning so much, and I'm so much closer to God now. You know, Eve, I feel the same. Was the Tower of Babel uh, a total disaster? And the confusion of tongues, a catastrophe? So we call it. Uh, Babel. No, vamos chamar Lobo. No, no, Babel. Lobo, 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 Babel. Lobo,
for was it necessary to accomplish God's purpose, to humble and scatter man over the face of the earth. You speak English? Oh, yes. Well, then, let's go. Oh, yes, isn't it amazing how God used to... Oh. Ah, what have I done? Was it a mistake when Moses killed the Egyptian and had to flee for his life? and lived 40 years in the wilderness with the sheep and his father-in-law. Wasn't that a terrible setback to the cause and to the deliverance of his people? Hello, deliver us! Please, Lord, Why deliver you us! Us! Or was it necessary for Moses to learn the lessons that God had to teach him in order to make him the man that he needed to be? To deliver his people totally dependent on God, not himself. Whoa. How long alone? How long? Now. Moses. Moses. The time. Moses. No, Moses. 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 Look at God. He's changed. Oh. Yes, he's not he's leaving on the arm of the flesh anymore. Saul? Saul? Come out of the baggage. We need to crown you king. Come. Did God make a mistake when he chose Saul to be king? <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> Considering the way Saul turned out. <laughs> Was Saul God's failure? Or did he accomplish God's purpose in training the king God was really after, David? After seeing Saul's bad example, I sure know what not to do. God gets his greatest victories out of seeming defeats and causes the wrath of man to praise him. <laughs> Very nice. Did God make a mistake when he let David fall for Bathsheba? Yeah, sweet roses of Rama. Hello, David. And fall from grace in the eyes of the kingdom. Uh, oh, where's David? Uh, oh, well, uh, well, we can't exactly. Look, what's he doing here? How could he? Oh, come on, Jack, let's go. Yes, let's and fall from the throne at the hand of his own son. Hear ye, hear ye! King David departs to another country with his wife Bathsheba. Hear ye. And depart in disgrace and scandal to another country with only a handful of friends. Did David really fall downward? Or was this a fall upwards? Sometimes, God's way up is down, well, usually in fact. Just the opposite of what we think. I blew it. God loves to do things contrary to natural expectations because that takes a miracle. And that shows that it's God and not man. From that squeezing and twisting of David's life came forth the sweet honey of the Psalms and the fragrance of his praises to the Lord for his mercy. It was all God and all grace and none of himself for his own righteousness. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving a lesson that's been an encouragement to other great sinners like me and you ever since. Well, look at this. Create me a clean heart, oh God. And renew. Run! Was Elijah's ministry defeated when he ran from Jezebel after his great victory on Mount Carmel, after slaying hundreds of false prophets? Oh, here he was running from a woman. Didn't this defeat his whole ministry? Didn't this prove that he wasn't such a great prophet after all? Here was the prophet of God, afraid of a woman. Elijah, I have a mission for you. Go and speak. 
Or was God trying to show him something that was going to make him a better, humbler prophet? Who would come back unafraid of the king, much less the queen? What is he doing here? I have a message from God for you. Elijah. Yes, Lord. Tell the king and queen that because of their wickedness. Well, Elijah then became a meek little man who listened to the still, small voice of God. He'd been great on doom and destruction and judgment. Now, he was learning the slow and patient process of feeding and leading the sheep. By the time God's ready to make you really great, well, he makes absolutely nothing out of you. You know, the map says it's this way. Huh. <laughs> I know exactly where it is. We don't need the map. Follow me. Well, he seems to know. Well, he's been there before. Well, let's go. I told you so. Oh, great. Mm. Well, is this Jones's residence? Jones? No, no, Jones is here to my house. When he can get you out of the way, well, well, then he has a chance. Yes. Well, uh, Lord, help me. Let, let's pray. Okay. Good idea. Okay. When you become nothing but a tool and a channel, Nothing but a little diamond of dust. Well, then God can really use you. Did God make a mistake? <laughs> or was all this necessary to make us what we ought to be? It's amazing you came at this time. I was out earlier with my friends and we decided to drop by my place. We're on our way out again. This is wonderful. Why don't you come on in and meet oh, my friends? Oh, sure. Wow. Hey, Perfect there. timing. God loves to do things contrary to the way we think he ought to do them. So quit trying to tell him how he ought to do it. So because we got here at this time, we were able to meet you all. Yes, that's right. Mm, interesting. Far out. Hmm, quite amazing. So we know it wasn't a mistake that we came at this time. Even though it did seem like a mistake at first. <laughs> Incredible. Can we tell you about Jesus? Oh, please, please do tell us about this Jesus. Yes, I'd love to hear. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Same, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Everybody, everybody, do you know what I think? Uh, what's what? what? I do not think that God makes mistakes. You said it. I think you're right. Who can know the mind of the Lord, and who can show him anything? <laughs> Not me. Me neither. <laughs> well, I sure can't. Just trust God that he knows what he's doing. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, right. and, and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Isn't it great to be out witnessing yes. again? Oh, yes. yes, it is. Oh, look, here comes the bus now. Oh, it, stop. Stop. it didn't stop. I wonder why. What, what are we going to do now? Uh, well, I know that God doesn't make mistakes. I wonder what he's going to do. Look, it's Mr. Bariachi. Uh, amazing that I find you here. I'm looking for you because my friend come to your house. We're going to eat pizza together. You witness to him about Jesus. Can you come? Oh, of yes, course. of course. Let's go. Yeah. Did God make a mistake? No, no sir. Bye bye. Bye bye. Making new habits. 
your parents have to remind you to brush your teeth before you go to bed at night? Some nights you remembered, but most nights you forgot and had to be reminded. That's the way it is whenever you're trying to break bad habits and make new habits. You usually forget more often than you remember. But as you keep going and keep working on it, you begin to forget a little bit less and remember a little bit more. Then, pretty soon, your forgetting has shrunk down to just a few times and your remembering has grown to most of the time. Then, after a while, you've replaced your old habit with your new good habit. And you remember all the time. You never forget to brush your teeth now, do you? But it took quite a long time to finally make that a habit, didn't it? So remember that when you're first trying to break a bad habit and make a new habit, you're bound to make mistakes and have slip-ups quite often. But don't get discouraged. Some days you'll have bad days and forget, and other days you'll have good days and remember. But as you keep trying and want to do better for the Lord, you'll get better and better. So don't worry if you fall or slip here and there along the way. Just get up and keep trying. Can you think of some good habits to start making? And Lord Jesus, please bless Mommy and Daddy and give us all a good night's sleep. I like to put on my clean indoor shoes before I go into the house. Oh, the other day I had such a fun time flying my kite. Oh, Lord Jesus, help me not to daydream during school time. I'm going to get my hands nice and clean. It's not so bad making mistakes, as long as you don't make a habit out of it. And remember, bad habits are overcome by good habits. real things. Have you ever thought how a little piece of string like this can be like a thought? And little things can grow into big things. Did you know that they used to build great big steel bridges and they would start using a little piece of string? Watch and I'll explain how. Well, if they wanted to build a bridge over this big flowing river, they would start with a little piece of string and they would tie it to a kite. They would tie the little piece of string to the kite and you may wonder, how can this build a great big steel bridge? Well, they would fly the kite over the river and then the men on the other side would start pulling the little piece of string over the river. While the men on the other side would tie a thicker piece of string and a bigger cord and a great big rope until finally they would pull over a great big heavy steel cable and they would build a bridge with it and hang all the materials they needed on it. Isn't that amazing? And it started with a little thin piece of string. Now this can be like our thoughts. If we start off a little thought that's not good or happy, like, well, she doesn't really like me, she's just pretending. And you let it grow, like, oh now, they're all talking about me. I knew it was true. And you let your thought grow. Look what happens. It becomes bigger and stronger until finally your thought can become like this big steel cable and you can get all wrapped up in your unhappy thoughts. And it can make you so sad. Has this ever happened to you? Then you have to really fight and Praise the Lord and quote scriptures and ask for prayer. 
Oh, thank you, Lord. It can be quite hard to get out of. But let's see how easy it would have been if we'd stopped that thought when it first started with a snip. See how easy it is? But if we let it grow and it gets a little thicker, it becomes a little bit more difficult to snip that thought. And if you let it grow even more, then I can't even snip it with this. I'd have to get help to cut it some other way. So when a little thought pops into your mind that is wrong or makes you unhappy, what are you going to do? That's right. You're going to snip it with a prayer or a quote or praise and a song and a positive thing. And remember, praise is the, that's right, the victory. Oh, praise God, Jamie. Sure is a beautiful day to be outside enjoying the beauties of creation. Yes, it sure is. Fantastic. Oh, there's an interesting sign. Come and have a cool drink. Uncle Sam, I'm kind of thirsty. Can we go see? Oh, sure. Let's take a look. Well, Lord, please lead and guide us. Well, here we are. This looks like it. A well, a dipper, and two cups. That's perfect. Looks good. Lord, please bless and cleanse this water. Mmm, nice. We could fill our water bottles with it. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Mmm, nice. Hey, look at this. What is it? Please help yourself. Well, that's nice. Nice apples. You know, I wonder who lives around here. Let's find out. Okay, well, let's follow the path a little further and see. And let's put our cups back. Just over here. Hello. Good afternoon. Hello. Well, howdy. I see that you found some of our cool water and fresh, juicy apples. I hope you enjoyed them. Yes, we did. Thank you so much. Well, come on, meet the wife here. I was curious, sir, uh, about what makes you do this. Well, my wife and I are getting old and don't have any children of our own to care for. We don't have much money that we can share with others, but the good Lord has surely blessed us with an abundance of good, cool water and fresh fruit. We're mighty rich in those things, and we like to help others. Isn't that right, Clara? That's right, Jake. And so, we just want to be able to do what we can and share with others who pass by. Well, God bless you both. Thank you kindly. When I get back home, I want to share what I have with others too. You do that, Sonny. And I'm telling you, you can never outgive God. He'll more than abundantly repay you in both material blessings and by the joy you feel inside when you help others. Where you all from? Well, we're from up north. I'm an engineer, actually. Well, you are. Well, that's... Giving is the greatest of all pleasures. If you just give what you have, even though it may seem very little to you, it may be just what someone else was desperately needing. Like the Bible says, from him that hath, according to his ability, and to him that hath not, according to his need. That's the sharing principle of love, and the loving principle of sharing. And don't forget, the richest people in the world in God's kingdom are those who share the most, and He will heap on them more than they can hold. God's idea is, the faster you give it away and share it, the more He'll heap on, and the more He'll give you so you can share even more.
that. A thousand years of peace on earth Just around the corner lies A time when love will reign supreme Our dreams will then be realized To be so close to that special one And have the world beneath our feet there will be no more sorrow or pain All wars at last will then have ceased Oh, it's our dream come true We're standing at forever's door Oh, do what you can do And we'll be ready for it The golden on the left was Seattle, but he wasn't sure what the other city was. Seattle is a city in Washington State, located in the northwestern part of the United States. The boat we were on couldn't take us to Seattle, so we had to get off at the other big city and take a little ferry across to Seattle. Then suddenly, we were in a small amusement park. Look, Grandpa! Oh, look at this horse! Grandpa, look at the ride! Grandpa, this is so much fun! Can we just stay here? Grandpa, can we just stay here? Grandpa told us that in his dream, that in order to get and cross to the other side of the river, we first had to find our way through all these amusement rides, which were actually on the ferry boat. The way was marked by a dotted line, painted on the deck of the boat, and up and down the steps. There were all kinds of different lines, but the line we had to follow to get to Seattle was a special one, marked Little Dog. They gave us a little ragdoll dog to carry, so we would remember what line we were supposed to follow. Grandpa was leading the way as we carefully followed the little dog line. Some 
places, and sometimes we'd lose our way. And then, we'd have to go back and find it again. One time when we were searching for the little dog line, Grandpa looked back and we weren't there. The first thing Grandpa thought was, Oh no, they've stopped to play with some of the amusements, but I'm not going to leave until I find them. And Grandpa just didn't stop looking for us. Children! Children! Where are you? Last thing Grandpa remembered in the dream was that he thought he would find his own way off the boat, and then he would have them paged on the loudspeaker. Would the three lost children please report to the ticket office? Would the three lost children please report to the ticket office? Then suddenly he woke up. Uh oh. Whoa. At first, Grandpa didn't know exactly what the meaning of the dream was. They didn't have any problems when they were on the big boat, but only when they were on the small ferry. The children got sidetracked by all the amusements and forgot all about what they were really supposed to do. Maybe it was like our witnessing and how it can get to be more of an amusement than for winning souls. But if you get so interested in the fun that you forget what your job is, like in Grandpa's dream, you can get off the track. Shawnee, come and meet this sweet lady. This is for you. Thanks. Jesus? Jesus, please come into my heart. Please come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins. Goodbye. Oh, wait. Here's a present for you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And when we put Jesus and others first, he often surprises us with the desires of our heart. Thank you, Jesus. The little dog line in the dream represented the Word and the Holy Spirit. So we need to follow very close and be guided by the Holy Spirit in every move. Otherwise, we won't know which way we're supposed to go. I hope you're staying on God's line and not getting lost. I love you. The body from 1 Corinthians 12. Do, 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 bop, 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 bop. Oh, hi, kids. Didn't Jesus make our bodies wonderful? Look, if I bend my knee, then I can walk. And I have amazing hands that can grab things. And I have elbows that can bend so I can drink. Mm-mm. I also have nice soft padding on my bottom, so it doesn't hurt when I sit down. Ah. Also, amazing ears that can hear all kinds of sounds. Can you hear that? Wow. And also, I have toes that help me keep my balance and help me to stretch way up high when I need to. And when I dance, woo, I can enjoy my whole body together. Praise the Lord. I sure am thankful for my body. Every part of your body is very important. What do you think would happen if my foot said, because I'm not the hand, I'm not a part of the body. Is the foot not a part of the body? Of course it is. And what if my ear said, because I'm not the eye, I'm not a part of the body. Isn't that ridiculous? The ear is a very important part of the body. If my whole body was an eye, how could I hear? And if my whole body was an ear, how could I smell? God made each part of our body and placed it exactly where he knew would be best. There are so many different parts, but together they make one body, just like yours and mine. And my eye can't say to my hand, ah, you're not necessary. It sure would be hard to grab things and even pick things up. And my head can't say to my foot, ah, you're not necessary. I mean, how would the head get around if I didn't have feet? Even the smallest part, like my fingernails, for example, which we may not think are very important, how could I scratch myself, or pick up small things, or even undo tight knots, Ooh, without them? 
I really love that. It sure is difficult to talk without a tongue. That's another member of the body which isn't very pretty, but is very essential, especially in talking and eating. We need every small and big part of our body. And when all of our members work together in unity, we can be very useful. Everyone is essential, and everyone is important. Everyone has his job and is needed. Did you know that we Christians are all members of Christ's body and have different uses and gifts? Some are good shepherds. Others are good teachers. Some have the gift of healing, and others are good helpers or organizers. We are all a different part of this body, and none of us can say to the other, I don't need you. We all need each other. So if you feel like you're just an odd thumb or not very important, well, you are, because thumbs are very important. Every big and little part of the body is important and very needed. And you are a very important part of Jesus' body and a very necessary part of God's kingdom. So let's all love one another and work together in unity and win the world for Jesus, shall we? So, Doctor, what is it? What do you think? Well, not good, is it? I'm afraid not. The serious sickness that you have recently recovered from, it left your eyes in a very weakened state. And I've done every test imaginable, but the result of every test only indicated they're not getting better. Uh, I'm sorry to say this, Mr. Moon, but in the space of one month, you will have completely lost your eyesight. You will be completely blind. I'm sorry, William. I'm sorry. I wish to God there was something more I could do. William, if there's ever anything, I mean, if, if you ever need me, don't ever hesitate to call on me. Thank you, Doctor. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night, there shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou wilt light my candle. The Lord my God shall enlighten my darkness. Lord, I accept this talent of blindness from thee. Help me to use it for thy glory, that at thy coming thou mayest receive thine own with usury. William Moon did eventually go completely blind. But he made a commitment to use his blindness to glorify the Lord. The Lord did not fail him, and in 1845, he invented what is known as moon type, an alphabet for the blind. Using the Latin alphabet, William created a finger reading system that was particularly unique in enabling those who become blind in later life to continue to read. Books printed in moon type are still in use around the world today. Through his work, thousands of people are able to read the Bible and come to know Jesus as their Savior. 
Jimmy, I have something special for you. What is it, Mother? Here, you tell me what it is. It, it's a book. Yes, it's the Bible. It was a gift from Mr. Moon. He gave it to me this morning to give to you. He's been so kind to me. And every day when I go to visit him, he teaches me how to finger read a little more. Oh, yes, and you're reading very well now. How would you like to read the Bible together? Come. Here, sit here. I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them. Uncle William? Yes? How can I do something special for Jesus like you have, even though I can't see? Well, Jimmy, no matter what type of difficulty you may have, or seeming disability, if you really love Jesus, and you love others, and you have faith, then the possibilities are limitless. Nothing happens to God's children unless it is the Lord's will and with His permission. Accidents don't just happen. They're caused. They're caused when we're not careful and prayerful. The best way to stop accidents is to make it impossible for them to happen. A fence at the top of the hill is better than a hospital at the bottom. Make it impossible for accidents to happen by being careful and prayerful. Lots of things can happen that you can't control, but the Lord can control. If you're not careful and prayerful, you could have an accident. Please remember to pray before you go riding your bicycle. So make it hard for accidents to happen by doing your part. Safety is God's promise, but we have to do our part by asking for His help. And remember, the very best way to stop accidents from happening is to always pray before you do anything or go anywhere. Lord, please bless and protect us as we go swimming. And help us to obey all the swimming pool rules in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye-bye. Keep praying. It's a beautiful day with sunny weather. We're going to have a bike ride all together. This one's broken and can't be used. Hard to fix it as them confused. Don't be sad because you don't know what to do. In the pubs, there's an answer for you. Look in activity book number three, a bike repair class for you and me. Activity book three. Hey! Little girl says, I'm too little to cook. Don't you worry, just take a look. In activity book number three, you'll find some no-bake recipes. Activity book three. Hey! Early learning is lots of fun, but this girl has just begun. Yet she remember heavenly helpers too. Alphabet letters ready for you. Make your own toys, heavenly buildings, activity book one. Magic tricks everybody can draw, activity book two. Horseback riding and recipes, activity book three. Games and dress up fun, activity book four. So when you're in a stew about what to do, don't moan and groan, there's an answer for you. Right in front of your very eyes, in the pubs, get wise. The Blind Men and the Elephant 
I'm going to tell you an old Indian fable. A fable is a story that's not true, but sometimes they have good lessons in them, like the one today. Are you ready? One day, they showed these six blind men an elephant and asked them to describe it. The first felt his broad and sturdy side and said, Oh my, the elephant is like a wall. The second felt the tusk and said, Nay, the elephant is like a spear. The third grabbed a hold of the trunk and said, I see, the elephant is like a snake. The fourth felt the leg and said, No, but the elephant is very much like a tree. The fifth happened to touch the ear and said, no, no, no. The elephant is like a fan. The sixth caught a hold of the tail and said, You are all wrong. The elephant is like a rope. Well, <laughs> in a way they were all right, weren't they? But it's only the person that can see that can put it all together and tell what it really looks like. That little story is like how Jesus has specially anointed Grandpa to see the whole Bible and can put together all that it has to say and tell us what it means and how we can live it today. Grandpa likes to read straight from the Bible, just the way the Lord inspired the writers to write it. There's nothing on earth more powerful than the Bible. It's inspired, it's beautiful and poetic. The pure Word of God Nothing can ever take the place of the Bible. The reason Grandpa has to write anything at all is to help us to understand it better and to show us how we can follow it in our daily lives. Grandpa makes sure that whatever he says is based on and goes along with the Bible. The family is a whole new nation and we need to know how to do everything Grandpa can't just hand us the Bible and say, here's how to have a home, or here, understand all the prophecies. It would be too hard for us and would take us a whole lifetime to try to figure it out in the Bible ourselves. In a way, we would be like the blind men without Grandpa's letters, not clearly seeing or understanding what the Bible says. But thank the Lord, for the mode letters and life with grandpas and true comics and posters that open our eyes to what the Bible says. And now grandpa wants you too to explain it to others so that they can also see it and understand it. There are a whole lot of people that know about the Bible and Jesus, but they need someone to show them how to live what Jesus taught. When you witness to people, you can tell them, look at us and the way we live. This is really what Jesus is like, and our homes are a sample of his love. What we are telling people is really nothing new. It's all in the Bible. But just like the blind man and the elephant, it takes someone to put it all together and show others what it's really like, like Grandpa does to us, and we do to the world. Amen? So, keep shining for Jesus. God bless you. I love you. Bye. mysterious dimension of eternal realities. The living world of forever. The everlasting realm of eternity. That fascinating dimension that is unseen by us in mortal flesh. All God's children of faith since the beginning of time have been looking for an unseen world, a better country, that is, and heavenly. 
Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city, the heavenly city, which will come down from God out of heaven and dwell with men. That's what we're all looking forward to, heaven on earth with its eternal city. Praise the Lord. But did you know that even now God's invisible kingdom is already in operation and existence? to describe the spiritual kingdom to you, but to make it very simple, we could take a scientific approach. As you know, science tells us that there are four dimensions that makes anything exist. In other words, everything in order to exist must have length, breadth, depth, and one more, which is called time. These are the four dimensions. Here is a little postcard of God's beautiful creation. Now the strange thing about this little postcard is that as I look at it edge on, I can really only see about two dimensions, length and breadth. I am now in the land of the Flatlander. The Flatlander can only understand his own little world of distance in two directions with absolutely no thickness whatsoever. He can't see anything else either. And if I were a Flatlander, I would insist that there were no other worlds beyond my two dimensions just because I can't see it. But now, we are going to move in a new and strange direction unknown to the Flatlander. The direction of height. We are going to go up into a new world of the third dimension. We're now looking down at this little postcard from above. And we find that it's a very amazing world indeed because this little postcard is a three-dimensional postcard and when it's looked at, edge on seems to have only two dimensions, length and breadth. But suddenly, when looked at from above, from height, it seems to have an altogether new dimension known as depth. And I actually seem to be able to see into the picture, some objects in front of others. So now we have entered a new world. Beyond the scope of the poor Flatlander who can only see two directions. Since we are now above his lowly plane of only two dimensions, we have passed completely out of his sight because he can neither look up nor down. And unless we stoop to his lowly level, he cannot see us at all, much less understand our new dimension. To reach his level at all, we have to get on an exact plane with him, completely in tune with his two dimensions. But the moment we vary the slightest bit out of his dimension, we are truly out of sight and our three-dimensional world becomes so big, so vast, so deep, and so high that he could not possibly begin to understand it, or us. But the poor Flatlander with his little flat brain, having never seen anything else but his own dimension, does not understand our dimension, knows nothing about it, has never seen it, much less been there, and he simply brushes all such nonsense aside and says that we and our dimension 
scientists don't exist. In fact, if we were even able to show it to him, he would probably be like the farmer the first time he saw a giraffe and said, there ain't no such thing. Oh, foolish Flatlander. Just because he doesn't believe in our heavenly world doesn't make it not so. This is just as stupid as if you were to say, I don't believe that New York or London exists because I've never seen them nor been there. But I want to tell you something. I've not only heard about it, read about it, seen pictures of it in vision, but I've been there, so I know it exists, whether Mr. Flatlander believes it or not. But if he does humbly ask Jesus to show him the truth and ask him to come into his heart, Mr. Flatlander can be changed into one of us. God in his mercy might give him a glimpse of our wonderful fifth dimension through the window of the spirit. It's that certain something you see in our eyes that you don't understand, that light on our faces you can't comprehend, that happy atmosphere that you feel in our loving family. Just read your Bible and you'll find evidences stories and positive declarations of the existence of our heavenly fifth dimensional spirit world throughout the whole book. If you would like to learn more about the wonderful world of the spirit, why don't you do a study on some of the letters about it with your teacher? It's out of this world. called bacteria start to eat away at the food between your teeth. The problem is that the little bacteria don't just eat the food, but they start to eat away at your teeth too. That's how we get cavities in our teeth. And if the cavities get too deep, they hurt. Holes in our teeth are called cavities. Important times to rinse our mouths are after each meal or snack, and especially after we eat anything that's sweet as those bacteria really like sweets. Sweet things that really stick to our teeth like raisins need to get swish swish swished away right after you eat them. So let's all swish 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 and rinse our mouths. You can, as Grandpa says, chew your water and then just swallow it afterwards. Thank you, Jesus. today. Are you ready for your show? Well, come on over here and let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this wonderful time that we have to be together. And we pray that this fun magic trick will teach us a good lesson about our service to you, Jesus. Now, let's look and see what we can find in the magic box today, shall we? As you can see, uh, there's nothing inside. And I'll just give it a tap with my wand. Oh, I've got to give it two taps, remember? There we go. Now, let's see if there's anything inside. Oh, look at that. It's a, it's a beautiful wooden cross. Doesn't looking at a cross remind you of Jesus? It reminds me of him. Because it was on a cross that Jesus died for our sins so that we can all go to heaven. That's why some Christians wear little crosses on chains. 
around their necks to show that they remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for them. And here's something else that a cross reminds me of. When Jesus was here on earth, he told his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Now, when Jesus talked about a cross here, he meant the disciples' daily work and service for him. And because we're also Jesus' disciples today, we can also obey what he said and take up our cross daily and follow him. Being a real Christian and following Jesus isn't always so easy, and the enemy does try to fight us, doesn't he? He can try to get us discouraged sometimes about the things we do every day, our schoolwork or our jobs. But if we keep our eyes on Jesus and keep a heavenly vision, then we'll realize something very exciting. Watch this. Do you see what I have here? This piece of cloth has a cross on it. And this is like the cross that Jesus gave us to carry. I work for him. But look, something very amazing is going to happen to this cross. Are you ready? Wow, look at that. What a wonderful transformation. Now instead of a cross, we have a beautiful glowing crown. So the exciting end of the story is that when we all get to heaven, Jesus is gonna give us a real crown of life, like this one you see here. Jesus said in Revelations 2.10, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. So one day, our cross will become our crown. As Grandpa said, They that bear the cross shall wear the crown, and God shall be their reward. So keep being faithful for Jesus, and when you get to heaven, Jesus will give you a wonderful reward for your faithfulness to Him. Praise the Lord. I love you. Bye-bye. It's time for Family Fun! <laughs>